Hey y'all, I'm Earl Lenny from the New Orleans Regional Basketball Officials Association. Thank you for joining us for our first in-season LHSOA basketball training video. Today we're going to discuss a few plays involving different aspects of the backcourt rule. I'm joined by Xavier Bell from the Baton Rouge Association. I'll let Xavier introduce himself. Hey everyone, my name is Xavier Bell and I am a member of the Baton Rouge Area Basketball Officials Association. I am extremely humbled to have the opportunity to discuss some plays with you on today so we can all become better officials. Okay, so today we're going to talk about first to touch, last to touch, and also team control status after a shot. And we also have a video that shows us an example of the exception to the rule on a throw-in. So let's put up the first video for discussion. On this play, we can talk about the first to touch, last to touch principle. It tells us that once a team in control has caused the ball to have front court status, that they may only retrieve a ball from the back court if a defensive player was the last to touch the ball in the front court. Xavier, what do you see happen on this play, and what should we rule on a play like this? So, Earl, on this play, we have already established that the red team has front court status. So then, as an official, we have to ask ourselves, who is the last individual to touch the ball before it goes in the back court? And in this play, we notice that the red player is the last individual to touch the ball before it goes in the back court. And then he is also the first player to touch the ball in the back when the ball is in the back court, which deems this a back court violation. Okay, so here is an example of a play that happens after a shot during rebounding action. So tell us what we see here. So in this video, we want to focus on the two players, the action that happens towards half court. Uh, we notice that the blue player pushes the ball to keep it in the front court, but he steps in the back court. So then we have to ask ourselves, is it, does this player have... Uh, front court status when he retrieves the ball and when the ball is in the front court So at that point we have to ask ourselves what are the things that warrants a player to have front court status? Yeah, Xavier Fundamental 9 states that a ball in flight has the same relationship to front court or back court or inbounds or out of bounds as when it last touched a person or the floor. In this play, it last touched the player on the blue team in the front court and never gained back court status. Always remember, you are where you're at until you get where you're going, and something in and nothing out, both of which are two easy phrases to help us with this type of play, which means the player has a foot in the front court and nothing in the back court, so this tells us that the player has front court status as we see happen in this play. The ball had front court status the entire time because when the player was in contact with the ball, he had front court status as well. When the player had backcourt status, he was never touching the ball. This is a legal play. Okay, Xavier, here is another play involving a shot and rebounding action. We see the referee that's table side signal a tip during this play. The tip signal should only be used in a first-to-touch, last-to-touch situation, indicating that any player of either team is free to retrieve the ball from the backcourt. The tip signal is not appropriate or needed in this play. Do you want to tell us what we need to know about this play when it comes to team control? So we understand based off Rule 4, Section 12, Article 3A, that team control continues until the ball is in flight during a try or tap for field goal. So at that point, we understand that no team has control of the ball, and that's why the, the shooting team was able to get the ball on the rebounding because nobody had team control and was able to retrieve the ball in the backcourt and bring it up to its front court. Earl, this is a great play that, that shows us Rule 9, Section 9, Article 3 on an inbounding play. Do you mind explaining us what it is that happens in this play? Sure. As you stated, Rule 993 
tells us that on a jump ball and inbound or when a player is on defense, that player may leave the floor from his or her front court and gain control of the ball in the air and land naturally. It doesn't matter which foot comes down to the floor first or if either foot lands in the front court or back court. This also means that we cannot establish front court or back court status until we have player control with two feet on the floor if the player catches the ball in the air on this play. Also, I should note that the trail official here is telling the coach that you can't have a backcourt violation until after both feet land. And also, the trail official here has to hustle towards the division line to get a better angle to referee this play. Thank you for watching this LHSOA in-season basketball training video. We hope everyone stays safe and healthy and has a prosperous basketball season. And always remember, you have to perform to progress.